Consider this our one and only half-term adventure. Oh, I don't think it would be our one and only, would it? I would like it to be. <laughs> oh, God. We okay. decided that early week it was really sunny, so we decided, you know, midweek. No, the actual day before this, yeah. Yeah, that we would go to, like, a seaside town. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Uh, stupid. Um, Grab an ice cream, do something nice. This is Sidmouth. Sidmouth? Is it Sidmouth or Sidmouth? Sidmouth. Okay. Because I don't think you say Sidmouth. Sounds a bit weird, what it is, isn't it? Like, yeah, okay, yeah. fair enough. Uh, it's next to, I would say it's next to Lyme Regis, near Exeter. Yes, it was. Sort of on the coast of Exeter, if you will. I say that like I'm great at geography. It was just the fact that after this we went to Lyme Regis, and I know it was. Funny enough, I decided on this place based on the fact that I'm trying to conquer all the Save the Children's. <laughs> I think, it was. I think Save the Children are the best shy shop, in my so, personal opinion. So based on that... Explain to, to explain to everyone listening and watching what happened. It was closed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One day, staff illness. Yeah. Closed. Literally, the only day, like... But anyway, we still, Sidmouth, it was an We found some cherry shops, didn't we? New experience, and we're taking you there. That is very oversized. It was nice. Well, you didn't show us the label? It was sea salt. It was sea salt. It was indeed. Mm. I showed you in the shop. I don't think I, you did. Yes, I did. And you looked at me gone off. No, I think you're lying. No, nope, there's no lies. The porky pies. No lie, no lie, no lie I, I. Anyway, I found this. Uh, so one. this is a 100% linen Sahara, size 5, old label, but... I like to pick up some Sahara when it's like really like lager looky. <laughs> yeah. More lager looky that are you laughing at my face? I'm laughing at Lily Rain's face. All oh, right, okay. Small person was on board today. It is half term. This is all we can manage. So this is a t- t- uh, Tara Jamon. I always look at it like the meat. Jam, like, it's a jambon. Isn't it? No, that is like Spanish for ham or something. I thought it was isn't French it? for ham. Jambon? French for ham. I don't, you know. Anyway, yeah, anyway, we get what you're saying. This was houndstooth Angora mixed Wool. blend cardigan cropped. And that was also £6. Retail on Tara Jamon is really very high um, and worth picking up. I only try and pick up, though, the more contemporary pieces from the brand. That's fair enough. Because um, I find that it can be a little bit sticky if the item isn't desirable. But this, apart from a D-Bubble, this is very desirable, I would say. Hound's tooth is always desirable. Someone called it something else other than hound's tooth. Dog's tooth. Okay? Dog's tooth. Um, I was also pointing these out to Austin, just hit him in the face at the same time as saying that. Those oversized cuffs, low waist, oversized Cropped. button jeans are real, and they would sell just on trend alone. If that makes sense. I just need to mention the dancing action that no one talked about whilst Lee Rain was doing well, a thing. We know that she's a dancing megastar. She is, uh, but the folks are here for the bargains, um, and the potential deals that are to be had. Deals. Deals. D-E-A-L-S. This is a dress agency. We did go in later on, didn't we, Bethany? Did you leave the footage in? No, I didn't. I didn't leave the footage in. Um, I'm classier than that, um, some might say. I love a dress agency. Dress agencies or consignment shops work on a very simple basis of 50-50. So they they, explain that to people, yeah. So you take your items to them and they take a 50% commission for selling it for you. Generally designer. Yeah, and normally they can sell it for a bit more because they have the shop front, they have the appeal of people just walking by, etc., so on and so forth. There are a lot of very good dress agencies in the UK that we buy from, personally. We that we buy to, for? We, yeah, we tend to get for. And we buy to re- resell from because you can can pick up bargains they have sales they have um all sorts of things like that so they're really worth going in um i would just like to say that you need to be careful of counterfeit items because it isn't necessarily vetted in a thorough manner so if you're looking what i'm saying is if you're looking to resell and you think you found a bargain um make sure you do, do your, research do your due diligence yeah 100 uh, percent. the, the, the reality sense. is everyone who owns or um works in one of those places whether it's that's amazing y2k tattoo star shirt um uh, who works or owns those places don't necessarily have the knowledge they should have um with all due respect uh, to sell those items to the public um, so we, we left the footage out, let's just say that. You make up your own mind there. Um, that tribal Y2K shirt, if you can find the ones like Big Dragons on, they sell really well. They're the, they're the more mythical style vibes, I guess. It, it, was, it was a bit too plain. Good mythical morning. Good, yeah. 
Anyway, if you get that reference, then you're amazing. This is an Arquette shirt. Austin found it. Is it needle cord? No, it's not. She has no. really heavy uh, cotton. Cotton. Um, and it's got big pockets. It does need a wash. It has now been washed. Um, it I came up lovely, actually. Arquette. Arquette. Arquette is owned by H&M. Don't let you put that, put you off. That is... It is it's, it's a high-end brand, It's a it? very premium high street brand. Yeah, okay. Um, like high-end high street. You're looking for this weird white label that it says Arquette on it. I think I show it and again in a moment. What? Oh, the label. The actual label, because yeah. I always try to make a point of showing those labels, because you, you, unless you know what what I'm showing you, you yeah. don't know it's there. Just a white label. They vary from garment to garment. Pay six pound for that one. We just spent forty back. This is really cool. Talk this to me about this. This is a Italian chore jacket. Now we can't. Well, there's not much info on it, and the brand is not sort of like a, a Googleable brand. However, inside there is a um, wash label or what would you call it? Material based makeup yeah, label. Yeah. And on it is a manufacturing company called Dorma Vetter. It, it's not important what it is. However, there is this manufacturing company shares a link with uh, several other high-end Italian brands such as Roberto Cavalli, um, Gucci, etc. So that enabled us to um, locate the location of manufacture to Italy. Yeah. Um, so we're able to list it as a vintage Italian tour jacket as opposed to French. It's got some really nice details as well. It's got drawstring bottom, as you can see there, because I'm pointing the camera that way. It's got the padded shoulder, which is almost like, you know, like a, um, a re recoil kind of you get from a shotgun or something like that, yeah. on the hunting jackets. Um, it's got it's got a, um, uh, a a pocket on the back. It's just got some nice redeeming features, which once again in a heavy heavy kind of cotton, um, it was just a very nice finished garment. We do really well. Seventies as well. Uh, sorry, yeah, the seventies. Authentic, redated. Uh, vintage chore jackets, um, especially from the seventies era, etc. Um, so that was eight pounds, and we have listed it for a hundred. Um, we'd sold another one recently uh, by a brand called Libro L Y. B R O, and that's which is a really one to look out for. That's a UK manufacturer. Yeah, Libro, um, which we kind of found out when we were doing some digging. It's a really, 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 really um kind of OG uh workwear brand, as you said, and as it was actually bought out, as in the the company bought it from you threw that at me then, yeah, yeah. Uh, by uh Nigel Caborn. So interesting fact that this Roberto Cavalli shirt has the same manufacturer as that. As that uh, shawl jacket. Yeah, so I don't know if that's the area it's in. Well, I don't know it's if that's also that, it, dated. The manufacturer is dated to 1973, so they've been producing clothes for, for a, a long, very long, long time. time. Yeah, exactly. Um, what I was going to say, though, going back to the um, Libro, um, they basically, because Nigel Caborn is based on kind of workwear and that, that whole kind of aesthetic, we almost missed this charity shop. We thought that we didn't know what this was, which sounds really stupid now from the window, so we, we came kind of came back to it. Um as regards to Libro, yeah, so uh, Nigel Caborn, or the company which owns Nigel Caborn now, bought Libro, and he does multiple different pieces with both li logos on the uh, jackets. Something to look out for, so the, so the dead stock versions of those jackets, before they had the collaboration, or, or before they owned the company, go for great money for the kind of real collectors. Mm -hmm. The Roberto Cavalli um, shirt was by is the Diffusion line, Just Cavalli, Just Cavalli. Um, and it's one of the only diffusion lines that I don't write off. It's, it's very good diffusion line because it shares yeah, so many right, links actually. with the main label. They do very similar things, but they make the Just Cavalli slightly cheaper, if that makes sense. I actually think you're right. I, I haven't thought about that, but it, 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 it's one of the it's one of the, the things that if you, if you put that on uh, those two kind of garments on a model, most people would be very hard pushed to tell you which line was which, yes. which is very rare, actually. Um, so that was a marbled uh, shirt. It was £4.50 and I've listed it for 150 that was also a large Rohan jacket for thirty pounds. Moving on. <laughs> wow, -ies. Anyway, yeah, Roberto Cavalli. The madder, the better. Um, but yeah, and I do. Pro it depends what the item is to how I price it. For example, um, Austin Madison in the kids section, which oh. is hugely inappropriate. Oh, Jose, how we love your Mexican tequila. Um, I yeah. hate tequila. However, it's very popular in modern day like culture of. People, e.g., uh, right Kendall, now, that's Kendall what you Jenner mean. has one, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has one, um, Ryan Reynolds has got a gin completely irrelevant. I just want to talk about Ryan Reynolds, but um, it's very popular. Yeah, tequila, tequila is a popular beverage, it, it is indeed. How much would you expect for that hat that you paid a pound for? Uh, I paid a pound, I'll put it for about 30 35 pounds, and some people will say, Why? And you know what I'm gonna say? 
Because I want her. Why not? Exactly. Um, unless you're going to find... So, for example, find an exact comp for that hat at nineteen ninety nine. Who made that nineteen ninety nine up? Because there's no price for it. It's not. It's not. It's not a product yeah. you're going to find multiples why of. Why nineteen ninety nine? Exactly. So why wouldn't I go higher? I and mean, you could say why wouldn't I go for hundred? Well, because I'm not taking the mic. That's why. <laughs> but either way, what I'm saying is, when you find a vintage piece, it's something cool. You can sell it as contemporary, but it's vintage or whatever. Just, just, just price it as you want to price it. Have fun, guys. Anyway, I found this wooden bowl worthless. Um, that kitty, that robot kitty cat. I'm pretty sure they were like early two thousand shiz. Um, well, possibly. I don't know a lot about Robo, Robo Kitty Cats. No, nor do I. Anyway, back to it. Um, This shop was actually very fruitful. We did find this town, Sidmouth, is very touristy. Especially yes. Easter holidays. I assume there's caravan parks around because I heard a lot of chit-chat about the caravan parks. Indeedy. Um, which made me kind reminds of want to get of fish lot. and chips on the, the beach. Remind, and... Reminds me a lot of West Wales, actually. Yes. Tenby. Tenby vibes. If anyone knows Tenby... Give me a hell yeah in the comments. Anyway, so um, it, so it was busy. That's the only thing I will say. Um, it was busy, and when it's busy with tourist trade, I find there's a lot of people that pick up for themselves. Um, not necessarily resellers or anything like that, but the the, the turnover of stocks quite great. Do you know what I mean? Like, is yeah. it people like visit them for fun? I, Does I, that make sense? One hundred percent. I think they're solely there to annoy me, uh, get in my way, and just generally bug me. One thing I do love about half term is having our small human around because i you know i just use her as a go-between between between me and austin it means i never have to talk to him ever and she just does all my dirty work for me ala rainbow here we go here's some trousers that she passed over these are c by chloe which is the diffusion line of chloe they're a silk blend relax harem style tailored trouser What, what a mouthful they're really nice, actually. And the, uh, the last sold comp for them is £100 on Poshmark. So I'm going to list them for £100. Um, this was Michael Kors. Now, we don't normally pick up Michael Kors, as everyone well knows. Ex- uh, exceptionally? Expe- uh, it's, oh, ex- Especially Michael by Michael Kors. Exactly. <laughs> However, that had a real safari utility chore jacket utility. vibe going on with the belted waist. So we couldn't resist. £12 listed for £120. These are retail was, sorry, retail was 200 195. These are Salvatore Ferragamo. Salvatore Ferragamo. They're Salvatore Ferragamo, mostly known in the shoe world for their low slang pumps with the kind of de- the um, either gold or silver detail on the toe. The bow. The bow, if you will. These aren't those. However, they are still. Uh, they still have a huge amount of value. They'll probably. They were. I think they were eight. Eight pounds. Seven pound ninety five. And they will go for around. I, I would guess around about anything between eighty and a hundred pounds. Um. Yes, they're a really nice deep wine color or ox blood. Um. Depending on what company you're buying from. Yep. Um. In the patent, and normally the patent like wears really poorly on. I find on luxury shoes like if we do you know when people what donate them and throw them into bags and then they yes. get like dented and you can't get the dent out like yeah I agree leather, it, you know it's, it's, a, it's a special kind of pit in leather I agree they're self-sabotaging cheap kind of, it's not like cheap UPV, UPVC PVC I should say you got one second to guess what shop we are in this Burberry coat is £150 which have nation um, so these are there are three Burberry trench coats which obviously the company I'm most famous for these are all 90s labels in varying conditions this one being the worst. They also um, all have the older, old, older style check uh, interior, not the Nova style check, as everyone knows Burberry for. There is a huge debate at the moment within the reseller community about Nova check. Nova check isn't dependent on color. Nova check is yeah. a tra- trademark tartan check pattern. Yep. Um, and it, it relates to the pattern of the check, so, not so, to the color. So how the how the lines lay? Not on this one we're looking at now, but the general Nova check. It's where. It's where the lines um, kind of match up, how they, how they, how the angle on the pattern, and that particular check is a house Nova check. No matter what color, it can be pink, it can be blue, it can be green, it can be beige. It For doesn't example, matter. Uh, Vivian Westwood has a similar house check, um, and she has the house check registered in different colors so it'll be blue red house green check red house yes. check blue and the same would be for burberry so it'll be burberry check beige burberry check pink um nova check sorry yes you know and then the color but it is all nova check these were vintage spike runners from reebok uh late uh 80s early 90s just they were really cool because they had still had everything with them they even had the tool which uh hello bethany's throwing at me um which which is actually a reebok tool to take the spikes out if these were trainers, I would have had them all day long. They were £20. Um, 
once again, I know some of you aren't aware that I am a professional runner, um, but I am indeed. So these, you know, I held these quite close to my heart. No, I, I'm not a runner in any way, shape or form. Uh, I don't run. I would choose not to run. And if my life depended on it, I would probably walk. What would you do in a zombie apocalypse? Walk. Pretend to be a zombie. Uh, That's I, an option. I don't think. I don't think pretending would be would be that hard. I'll be honest. Oh yeah, see exactly. That's what I'm saying. You're either a runner or you're a stayer. That's what I'm. You know. I'm a stayer all day. Okay. I'm a. I'm like I'm that person with all the samurai swords, just like whipping it around. Moving on, uh, we are in, in an air ambulance Dorset store, I believe. This wasn't good. This was opposite the clothes save the children. So it saved my trip. Um, well, I, did, I say that loosely. But, um, <laughs> the whole place was quite good. Yeah. Um, but I'm saying it didn't save my trip, but it gave me one last charity shop to venture into. Before uh, falling into the mental abyss that is... Um, what? What's what? this place called? Sidmouth. Yep. Right, no, it yeah. was actually really nice. Uh, as regards to the town in general, I actually enjoyed the town. Did you not? Um, yeah. If, if it was like sun, sunny and outside and you wanted to go for some fish and chips and a beer, it was like a vibe. Yeah. Does Sadly, we were walking around charity shops before we had the beer and the chips. I found this. I thought it was toast. Um, it isn't. Uh, it's lovely, though. <laughs> it's a sea salt a pinafore dress. Um, I find pinafore dresses from any of those brands, sea salt, fat face, um, uh, toast, are really good. It was £8, and it's in this like beautiful check pattern, which I thought would be really nice for picnics in the summer. The colours are lovely, I will say. Very vibrant as well. I mean, A for 40 40 It's also never been washed. Oh, I like that style. Because the inner tag is so... So crispy. crispy. Yeah. It's like beautifully untouched. Um, yeah, I'm gonna list it for 40. I'm gonna take offers. It's it's it was um a size 12, and traditionally in sea salt at the moment I'm buying the larger sizes because they just sell quicker. Yep. Um, unless trousers, I always buy all trousers. Um, but that was an exceptional piece. It was very nice, wasn't it? It was indeed. It was giving me utility chore toast vibes. Big time. Coming up next is an Right about now. No, it isn't. I want to know something. We can't sell rollovers. I, I can't stand it because I can't sell it. Now, uh, people tell me, fair aisle and stuff like that. Is this what I'm meant to be looking for? No, it's, obviously this is, not, it's, this is not fair aisle. But what exactly, for, the, for all the massive rollover sellers, which apparently have got six yachts, two Ferraris, and but, but have bought multiple homes on their rollover sales, what exactly am I looking for to sell? I say that in the most rudest manner possible. You're always trying to pick up rollovers and you just don't know. Yeah, do like, that's what I'm saying. But, but no one answers my question ever. Like, like, I don't know. People will say, oh, well, over, it sells great. Uh, if it sells great for you, please tell me what sells great. Someone called it wall lovers the other day. Oh, the I'm O not... is exaggerated. The O is bigger. But there's one out. In the middle. It's right? either wool overs or woo lovers. <laughs> it's not a wool lovers, is it? Woo lovers. <laughs> I, am a, I am a lover of a woo. Anyway, that's that. That was Sidmouth. We will be back tomorrow with another video. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you didn't, well, pfft, good night and goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.